Hi guys, welcome to Fresh and Pretty. Honey here. Today I wanted to talk about a little about the Sabbaths, maybe a few words on the Esbats, how they are playing out on my path. This is not going to be one of those educational videos about the Sabbaths because I don't, because I'm not qualified on doing those but I think that there are plenty of those. And here at the beginning, I could link a few of my recent favorites that I've been heavily watching lately. And one of the channels is Witch in the Working. His channel is, uh, he, he's a gardenarian, gardenarian priest, and but I think his way of doing these videos, he's really funny and he's, the style is unique, so. There's some male voice if somebody's interested, and just because of the balance, uh, I'll also, I'm also gonna link another channel, and that one I've been enjoying a lot also lately. And her name is Megan Angus, and for example, she has these amazing long, two hour long training sessions around the Sabbath, so. If you're interested on really having something else than those basic fluffy all about Ostra Ostara in five minute type of videos, I highly recommend both these uh, guys. They are really funny and I think there's a lot of content also, but I enjoy watching their videos. So if you want to know more, go check those out. But I wanted to talk about how somehow the Sabbaths have been creeping into my life and into my past. Because as I've said many times, I don't know what label to put on my forehead. Maybe I don't need to, but maybe someday I will. And until that day comes, I'm just gonna call call myself a seeker. But I've found that somehow, really organically, I've started noticing the Sabbaths. Uh, the Esbets came rather sooner into my practice with, with the Tarot. And I started to do readings with the lunar cycles and started to learn more and also tune in to that cycle more and it has become a really natural part of my practice nowadays and what is funny <laughs> my 13 year old daughter has found these things in in TikTok she's not interested on in what I do and doesn't watch my content but she asked me that mom can we do moon water on the next full moon and I was like oh Sure honey, sure honey, we can do that. But that's just uh, funny how, you know, she's finding these things when she's 13 and I'm here going on 38 and getting used to this stuff. But that's life. What I've been doing around the Esbets, I've, of course I've been reading a lot, studying a lot, and you just, on the way you pick up things. and. On my channel anniversary live, I was talking about books that I've been reading lately and I still have a pile that needs to be read. But I was talking about one book that I wanted to, because I forgot to show it. And it's this one by Phyllis Kurt, Witchcrafting. And this is a book. Well, now that we are talking about Sabbaths, yes, this goes through the Sabbaths also in the end, but they are not like really long and deep chapters. But why I'm bringing this book up is that uh, she is, uh, uh, if I understood, a high priestess. She has created this um, branch of, of Ara Wicca which is a shamanic based. So it's different. It's not the traditional Gardnerian or Alexandrian. It's in, in its own way, but 
why I want to highlight that book is that I think that for people like me who have been studying about shamanism, it's an interesting bridging type of book between shamanism and witchcraft. But she also talks in a way that I think that is really thought provoking. And it took, this book took me the longest time of all to read, even though it was a nice read. It wasn't tricky, but it made me think about these things. Like, more like why and how. I, I love that that book isn't just a spell book or recipe book. Every book has its, its place and its meaning. But that book kind of, it reads like a, a novel and I, and I enjoy having those type of books also. Like, those help me to paint that picture in my head. That what does all this mean to me and how I feel about it. Because my path isn't, I guess it's also because of my age, I don't have the need to to read a spell book and do everything like row by row. I'm just interesting more about learning and and getting in tune of my feelings and then eventually seeing how it all turns out in the future. So things have kind of came in their own pace and sometimes also in a way that I haven't even realized it like much later on and one of those things was my my full equinox reading that I did in the forest with the druid craft and I got the wheel card and on that day it didn't you know nothing clicked and I think those readings that when it's hardest for me to try to understand the meaning they give me the most after all and it took me from the fall equinox to the spring equinox to see the meaning of this card and yesterday was the spring equinox the astara and i really embodied that card and I haven't been using the Druidcraft between these two equinoxes just because I have way too many decks. But yesterday, for some reason, I wanted to do my morning reading with this same deck. And again, I did my reading around the time when the equinox was happening here in Finland. And again, the High Priestess was there. She was present in my fall equinox reading, but she was present in my spring equinox reading also. And I think that with the Druid craft, we have now found our way of really working together. And this deck has got, gotten its special place in my practice. But on my path, I started to notice this equinoxes and sabbats coming along and then I have had the you know internal need to do something related to those things and it has grown and grown and grown and grown like this year during in bulk I, I got my first seeds like my mandrakes my belladonna's all my nightshades and I was planting them right after the imbal and this ostara I really for the first time really did a lot of research and planning and it was so much fun because I think that Finland's year is kind of really in a nice harmony with the with the wheel of the year because we have the seasons and they are really clear. And here the darkness during the darker 
period of the of the year and, and, and of the wheel is so tangible. So it makes it really easy and really natural to to really relate with the cycles of the suns and the sun based also celebrations that the Sabbaths are. Well learning about all these things I have been surprised also how the working with deity has become like slowly a bigger part of my practice but that's something that I can't really put my words around yet so maybe I'll return to that more on some time and try to focus on the more practical things which are easier for me to talk at this point. But for this Ostara, I, I gathered many things. I wanted to have a bright, really natural altar cloth. And I ended up actually buying a hammam towel, uh, which was so beautiful and organic. And it worked beautifully yesterday in, in my Ostara altar. I spent several weeks gathering all the little bits and pieces that I wanted to be part and and my main focus technically was on on planting seeds because this spring I have been really putting a lot of love and effort to to my little baby plants every morning when I wake up I go to my little kitchen garden and and see in which part we do have new babies and and it's been a beautiful experiment and a beautiful way of connecting already with the nature even though we still have ice and snow outside but the changes of the cycles of the sun are really visible already and I can feel it in my mood and and in everything I do and why I love the Sabbaths is because I've never been really interested about the Christian based holidays and mostly because they have also become really commercial commercial these days there's always things that you need to do and you need to buy and everything buy 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 more buy more buy more even though I acquired few things for my Ostara it wasn't like necessary I, I really wanted to do those things and much I did myself like the ugliest painted egg that probably anybody has ever seen but it's been I don't know over 30 years since I've done painting painting eggs so this was fun but little things like the painting of the egg and many more little things were part of my my yesterday on top of my big ritual and what I love about the Sabbaths also is that how they inspire me to become become better and do better things and enjoy the things that I do and for me the Ostar celebrations were kind of like a two-day huge thing because on Friday I did a massive massive spring cleaning in the house I was cleaning all the nooks and crannies that I normally don't I took the, uh, the carpets outside I, I washed everything from the floor to the ceiling and what I wanted to incorporate also for the spring cleaning was not just my physical space and not just the energetic cleansing with, with smudging, but I also wanted to cleanse our relationship with, with me and the hubby. And after the cleaning, we sat down and really with the intention of having a cleaning conversation that both of us had the opportunity to say out loud all the little things from the nooks and the crannies of the brain that had been collecting dust during 
during these times and and I think that life during this lockdown periods has bring its unique challenges even to relationships not only with couples but but in families overall and I think that was a great way to add in the spring cleaning to do a relationship cleansing and only after that I did the smudging because I wanted to get it all out and it was amazing the feeling how when I came in from outside after all this was done how I could really feel the cleanness in the house like physically but emotionally so doing things like this doesn't cost you anything but it makes it is a it takes a lot of effort but it's so worth it and none of the like ordinary holidays have ever inspired me to do anything I feel like Christmas cleaning is the, the most boring thing ever but for some reason when I do things around the Sabbaths, I feel so inspired and the chores, they, they don't feel like chores. They feel like, like you're doing spiritual work. And if it works, that's amazing. And after the cleansing talk, I went to the store and picked up a bottle of the same champagne that we first drank when we moved into this house. We were sitting on the floor in the kitchen, no furniture, no nothing, and we were sitting on the floor and drinking that champagne. So I think that kind of rounded things up and that was the way of, of celebrating that relationship of Stara <laughs> spring cleansing ritual that we did. And my main part was my, my Ostara ritual in which I, I collected all these items also. And I was so happy that we are in a situation now where I can ask, ask when I can have a me time and get the home for myself. So I was alone in the house and and I did my, my Ostara ritual where, where I was planting the seed and, and doing things that are way too personal to, to even share and, and nobody even would care. But I was amazed. Also the internal learnings that I have been, how I have been evolving during this time when I've been studying and doing things because for the first time I could really feel how I raised the energy you know when you read books about it and for example in the ritual that I did with my cauldron it was powerful but it wasn't the same as it was yesterday because now I could feel it in, in every soul of my body in a concrete way and it was such an ecstatic experience that it's impossible to try to explain but I'm really trying to enjoy and and also personally be kind of be kind of I don't know proud if it's that is the right word but to acknowledge how I am learning and evolving and really doing things and and not only reading even though I think that including sturdy books and basing the things into into right things and even though I read I read in a big variation I read books that aren't good I read books that are better I read great books and then I try to find the red line 
than what it all means to me. And I know this video is totally lacking its red line. I find that these videos where I try to talk about the more personal stuff, I'm always struggling to find the correct words. I think it's so much easier to talk about tarot cards because they just are there. But when you try to put English words around your own deep feelings and talk about things that kind of make me I feel very vulnerable and fragile even though that's not really typically me so sorry guys if it's hard to try to find the red line in in this video well I guess my path as a some sort of pagan is just really organically going its own way and in the midst of it all I'm some, sometimes really surprised and awed but enjoying the journey the whole time but these aha moments like with the wheel card they might take their time to pop in but that's kind of also cool that I do have these old videos where I can go back to because I'm not that big on journaling. I'm getting better all the time, mostly filling the my book that I have rather than just standard tarot journals. But I have things to go back to and re reflect and understand more. But if you look here, my morning reading from yesterday, the Ostara tarot reading, you can see by the fool in the beginning that I truly can relate to what the fool here is re representing in this spread. So I can really relate to this fool card. And this reading for me was crystal clear. If you want to see it as I did, you might see a maiden in there. You might see the young growing sun on the masculine deity there you might see the same things as i do or you might see totally different things but how i feel towards the deities and and like here in the springtime if we talk about the maiden energy and how i really relate to that even though Physically, and, and if, if we think about the lifespan of a woman, if we think about the maiden, mother and, mother and crone, I'm clearly, obviously, in the mother phase of my life. But spiritually, I feel like a teeny tiny maiden. And I think that might be a big part how I and why I feel such a deep connection and inspiration during this time, during Ostara. And I can't wait what I'll be doing on, on Beltane because I love how these Sabbaths, they sit on these, around the times when we have had also these national Finnish holidays that I have never liked, like the, the May Day Vappu that we have. It's all about clowns and balloons and serpentine this paper stringy it's i've never really enjoyed that the things we've only done for for the kids to enjoy but i've never been a fan of those but with the sabbaths i have something that feels me that they feel like they feel important they feel like they have meaning. They are not just empty celebrations like like Christmas has been for me ever since I've grown up. When I was a kid I was happy about the packages but those celebrations always lacked the meaning. And with the Sabbaths it's all about the meaning and far less about what you should do and what you shouldn't do and, and it's more internal if you get what I mean but I'm really enjoying this 
journey and seeing how my path evolves. And like the druid craft kind of chosen on its own its place in my collection to, to be a specific deck, to use it in specific oca occasions. I wasn't planning on that. It just happened. And I would love to know that do you guys have specific tarot decks that are that you use on on the sabbats or or just in espets in your in your lunar readings or maybe if you have many decks and i would love to hear more about if you have decks related to these things and overall i would be curious to know that how many of you guys out there do celebrate the sabbats and how long have you done it and and i would love to hear more about your journeys because i see people doing videos like candy was doing her amazing unicorn a star altar and and i see people doing in in instagram their stuff but if you want to share write it down in the comment box i'd love to continue the conversation there I truly hope I was able to edit out some sort of sense in all this nonsense. And if somebody survived this far, congratulations. <laughs> it must not, not have been easy. But like everything, like this egg, my only choice is to do things my way. And today, this was the result of walking my way on my path. Until next time. Bye, guys.